front of Notre Dame, Paris. The night was frosty. The flowers shivered. The bushes draped with sheets coldly quivered. The stars with brilliance set the skies ablaze. In the studio, I read old poems and stories in a nostalgic daze. Suddenly, in front of the bell towers of Notre Dame, I saw a figure aged and wan, hauled in a cart of planks and boards, secured for travel by long metal cords to keep the goddess upright so the statue wouldn't fall. A towering woman's form, at least four stories tall, immobile, staring straight ahead, with no expression of peace or dread, as if she saw it all, or nothing at all. The gargoyles watched from the towers during what seemed innumerable hours, as the wheels of the rustic cart rolled with a groan, then stopped, then start, over the rough cobblestones clattering to a guillotine where a crowd was gathering. This scene was repeated years ago in my head, remembered when I woke in bed, not in medieval Ile de la Cité, but in the morning of a present day. It was, of course, a rather strange dream, like a submerged cathedral hidden from view. Why would it surface tonight, an eerie scene, reminding me of things I drew? What are these images and sounds so strange and gray? Do they really come from another day so far away? Or are they from a mental crucible that spills its fiery stream into form and structure so that others may see the artist's dream? Since art hints at things beyond an earthly sense, we may go behind or beyond this present tense. Now this is a rather large uh, watercolor uh, ink and acrylic painting uh, on watercolor paper. These are all on very, very heavy watercolor paper. Uh, that uh, It's not the elephant size. Most of the paintings uh, that were shown in Paris for the first show, which was called um, Voyage en Arique, which means an unusual voyage, a Paris, a Venise, uh, Venice and Paris. I'm going to do some close-ups on the um, painting itself. Uh, there's the large figure, um, which is the uh, woman in the cart, uh, which really goes back to a figure that's in the Cleveland Museum that I saw, must have seen when I was in college. Uh, the spectators are the gargoyles, and we've got them on the left of the painting and on the right here. Uh, where you see them looking on the scene. And the scene at the bottom of the statue in the cart uh, is the guillotine. The lower part of the painting has a clock, um, which is just after midnight. And if you look around here, you can see that you're in the Opéra, the uh, Garnier Opéra, which was um, constructed in the Belle Époque. Uh, and it is, of course, on the right bank, and uh, we're over here on the left bank uh, near the Panthéon, in the um, fourth arrondissement. The fourth and the fifth arrondissement uh, are my favorite in Paris because they are the oldest. And so much of Roman and medieval Paris uh, is evident, and it is a very strong um, influence on the way I see Paris. Three actors on a stage, dressed in black fur. The queen of the night wears crystal chandeliers like tiaras. The man with the clementine smiles as he offers us candy ginger. And Ibu at the market sells us wooden objects, which we see as medieval, but it's art d'Afrique. The backdrop for the first is Paris at night the fortresses of the rich on the Rue de la Paix, the second, the market, the same for the third. It's an opera in progress, not in the repertoire. 
Now these are four paintings that we're going to be talking about that have to do with the short little humorous poem called um, Three Actors on a Stage. And I'm going to kind of explain these uh, by going up close to them. And this is about the gallery owner um, who uh, owned the Gallery Art and Communication, which is now called the Lise Cormery Gallery on the Rue Lanneau, which is right next to the uh, Pantheon. Um, it's on what is called uh, the uh, Hill of St. Genevieve. And um, it's very, very historic. Um, it has been basically left untouched in terms of the streets from the Middle Ages. In any event, uh, here's Lise. And um, she, when she saw this, she said, I made her look like a witch, but um, I didn't mean to. Um, and she is quite glamorous and she uh, wore black fur, of course, as in the poem. And next to her is the man that, uh, kindly, kindly man in the market. This is the Place Maubert. And um, he showed us uh, different things, but always offered us clementines and um, just so lovely. And then over on the far right, you see Ibu. Ibu is uh, from Africa, and um, he brings out of the French Congo area, he brings beautiful, beautiful masks and other objects, which, because we can't afford medieval uh, wooden sculpture, um, it has some of the characteristics that you associate with the medieval period uh, in Europe, which uh, I know it sounds odd, but it is a, a kind of uh, love for the wood and the material. And um, also, of course, it's religious in different sense, but uh, it has geometric qualities that uh, are akin to uh, the way wood is carved. And uh, this, is, this is a delight. Well, in any event, this is very fanciful. And we're going to go to the next painting, if I can get them in order. Um, there we have the uh, we have the Queen of the Night. That's 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 Lise, of course, and you see she's wearing the chandelier. Then over here we have another version of that same scene, where we've got some very unusual hats. Um, <laughs> there was a wheeled horse, and then you see a man with plumes on his hat. I can't remember what that was all about. And then you see the Queen of the Night with a cone-shaped hat, and then uh, Charlemagne. Uh, there uh, on the horse, um, looking rather Germanic in this, this very whimsical uh, ink and watercolor uh, with a little bit of uh, foil. Gilt, globe-like domes shimmer serenely, then flash and blink like broken bits of tesserae. O oh, neon-lit traveler in time, stand still and watch the mime. Gondoliers' oars stir bullseye circles into green molten glass, whose wavelets lap antiphonally smooth marble steps. Sapphires and emeralds, pearls, rubies, and gold, filigreed arches of pale pink stones, enhanced by columns of Byzantine tones. Lines of laundry looped in swags, garbage and treasure all in a measure, facets of the gross and sublime. Oh, smell of the water and gasoline vapor, be silent until we finish this caper. Angels on bridges look with hope for the great bronze horses to escape from San Marco, while specters of revelers from centuries past, masked marionettes dancing in faded frescoes, stare frozen in the damask darkness 
of derelict palazzos. What of this journey to the past? Did you really think all of this would last? Below, the sea, turquoise and jade. Above, the cobalt dome of spirit-filled air. Venice in blue and white spirals, in gold and in jewels. A shell of the past, a city of the sea. Save for the stone, it would slip into sea foam and sand, erased from sense, erased from all that we did see. And now are all our revels ended, and all this has to painting tended. Well, we're back here in the studio again, and um, in this what used to be an enormous space, which has shrunk to, I don't know, minuscule proportions, so to speak. Um, and we're going to take a look at uh, one of the Venetian paintings. Um, we can't use the one that's in Massachusetts in the Massachusetts uh, Museum of Fine Arts in Springfield, Massachusetts which is a part of their permanent collection, called Venice Poem, after the actual poem. But we have this painting, uh, which is kind of a companion piece, and I'm just going to go over and show you how big elephant-sized watercolor paper is. This is um, 40 by 60 inches, and I'm going over here to uh, give you an idea of how big it is. Um, these are the domes of uh, St. Mark's, and this is the Campanile um, in the square. Uh, this is um, pennants flying, some of the things that were in the poem, um, and of course you can't really see it here. Uh, I can move the camera, come in a little bit closer, but there's a lot of, um, actually, it's foil. It's not gold leaf. I've used a lot of gold leaf in my work um, subsequently. Remember one of my master's degrees is in the history of Byzantine art. So um, I actually have traveled um, all over uh, the Mediterranean looking at mosaics uh, that are Byzantine and early Christian from those periods. And of course, I'm a med medievalist at heart, really. But um, what we have here to kind of fill in the negative space in the sky um, are, are clotheslines. Because when I went to Italy the first time way, way back in the 60s, uh, there was laundry hanging in the streets of Rome, for example, and also in New York when you came in on the train, um, you know, along the Hudson River and you came into New York, you would see all the laundry hanging between the buildings. And I just have this delight in the way it fills negative space. So I hung the chairs from the lines this time because the show in Paris was the debut of my chair series, which lasted, oh, five or six years. Most of the series I do last about that length of time. So here you see uh, the horses, my beloved horses that they have now put in a museum with brick walls, which the what you see on the front of the cathedral is, you know, what do you call it, epoxy. Huh. Anyway, um, this gives you an idea, and we'll go take some closer looks. I'll pan in on some of this, and it's hard to do because it is glass. These were all framed in Paris, um, so all the framing was the same. And um, they're backed with mahogany. That's the way the French do things. But the plexi um, will give you a little bit of glare, and so it's hard to read sometimes how the foil works. The foil is much more active than the gold leaf, um, and it is literally from, don't laugh, Hershey candy wrappers. You know, little kisses? Mm -hmm. And so when that was discovered, and I think it was a Chinese ambassador that I was talking to in Paris at the gallery uh, for the opening. The guest list included some of the top politicians in France, um, including a, a former president uh, of France. And so the Chinese ambassador was there. She did not speak English. 
So we're speaking in my French, which everybody should laugh at, but they don't. They're really kind. And so when it came to the part about what they were made of, the ambassador rubbed not like this, you know, rub, rubbing her tummy, says Madame Joe. And um, anyway, that's, that's part of the story behind it. Um, kind of fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can pan in a little bit on some of this and do it with not too much um, to-do or disturbance. I'm going to see if I can actually, I'm just going to try to do this manually and it might be smoother, but this camera, and eh, you know what, I'm going to have to use the power zoom here. Okay, well, we're getting there. Okay, there we go. And you can see that, you know, the it's pastel, acrylic, watercolor, ink. Okay, I love ink. And this kind of gives you some of the details. I see a little bit of the sparkle um, of the gold foil. And I actually put this out in the Florida sun so that it was out there for like, I can't remember how long. But the point was I wanted to make sure it was archival. And if it lasts a couple years in the Florida sun, <laughs> it'll last anywhere. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really, Florida is really rough between the sun and the humidity. And so I think these will last <laughs> quite a long time. But, you know, this is, this is one of my horses down here. There are four of them and they're from a Roman quadriga, which was placed in the Hippodrome. See, I told you, I know something about the Byzantine history. And they were taken to Constantinople and they actually were brought back. I'm gonna show you uh, a couple paintings where I just focused on the horses themselves. But, and the domes are really kind of fun. So anyway, that's, that's Venice. Courtesans? Courtesans in black seductive shuttered gondolas have been replaced by refrigerated fish lockers on larger barges painted red and blue and dollies upside down with wheels pointed up to purple gray skies. Bins of busted terracotta, sacks of concrete and bottled water, cranes to take garbage somewhere else, Hippopotamus, ponderous vaporados, bearing tightly packed passengers, all gliding along the Grand Canal. Quick turns of the tiller, prompt gaffs from our balconic box seats. The Venetian opera proceeds horizontally towards open water and deforested lands with vertical chimneys of chemical corruption. Madama Venezia survives the changes of centuries with plaster patches and restoration, and courtesans glide seductively by in our fog-fed imaginations. When you don't see things um, in person, you know, in, in actuality, as it were, in a museum or in an artist studio or, or gallery, it's hard to tell what the size of things are. And this one I'm gonna show you because this is um, a different kind of treatment of Venice. Uh, you're gonna see some, or you have seen some little watercolors, but uh, this is um, on canvas, and this does have gold leaf. And I'm gonna go into it just so you can see how different the abstract conception is from that which is more literal that has figurative elements in it. Uh, and this one, the figurative elements are very small and they're like little ink kind of almost like etched into the gold leaf. And the inspiration for this was the canals of Venice that when, if you were to look at it from uh, a bird's eye perspective or up in the air, you would see all these channels of water um, separating you know, blocks in Venice as streets would uh, in most cities. And I, I just was fascinated with it. And this gave me an opportunity to really kind of abstract some of this. And my tripod is not very level here. So I'm just trying to level it out a little bit, but you get the idea. 
and you can see how the gold changes. And that's the thing about using reflective materials on a canvas is that it will actually um, pick up different light at different times of the day and <clears throat> it gives it almost like two layers. And in some paintings I've actually put a plexi layer and then over a primary layer. That's kind of interesting. Oh, we got the horse there. Yeah, see what I mean about the difference between the foil and the gold leaf? The gold leaf is on your left there. On the canvas, it's actually linen. And on the right, you see the uh, foil. And the foil, just because it's so crinkly, you know, it's got much more of a, uh, I call it uh, kind of um, activity you know, because of the way the light hits it and is refracted from it. And the gold leaf is a little bit quieter and a little bit more mellow. Uh, highly reflective. Uh, in some areas you can see how reflective it is. You know, it's just very thin, thin sheets of gold. And that's adhered to the uh, canvas. And then I use my famous ink and contrast and my cadmium red and my cadmium yellow and the blues and, and Venice is just so magical that way. Well, I said this might be kind of behind the scenes and this is truly behind the scenes because here's one of the paintings of the horses. Um, I wasn't going to show this, but I'm going to. And I'll try to zoom in just a little bit on it and see if that'll help. Um, nice and slow. Oh yeah, it's a wonderful painting. And this is the four horses. And I didn't mention that Napoleon actually stole them from St. Mark's facade, which remember they had come from Constantinople. That was after the Fourth Crusade when the Venetians were so powerful. And so here are the four horses. And of course they were lowered from the facade, put on wheeled carts and, and taken you know, by ship to Paris. And they were returned. They didn't stay in France very long. But I've kind of worked with that theme. And then what we have is uh, on the other side of the room here, here's just a close-up. It's all gold leaf. Um, some really delicate purples and, and greens and really beautiful colors. Um, okay, on the other side of this, this room, if I can kind of pan across here, um, we're just going to go across here to another painting. There's one of the masks that Ibu sold us in Paris. And there is a painting called, this is on the watercolor, the um, elephant size. And I'm going to see if I can just zoom in a little bit. And there's spotlights here and there. Uh, I'll give you an idea. And that's a wonderful piece because it's Paris. It's called an American view of Paris because what it shows is Paris on both banks. So the Pantheon Notre Dame, um, uh, Ambalide, uh, Eiffel Tower, <laughs> it's all on the same side, <laughs> with a little carousel down there. And um, it, it's, it's, of course, totally whimsical. And the chairs, two Chippendale chairs, um, kind of represent Jill and me looking at Paris, you know, uh, all at once. Well, it's kind of fun. And, and of course, in, in the room, in the house, um, which probably has a thousand paintings total, but there's always about 150 up. Um, that's the fun thing of Maine. Uh, just give you an idea how many paintings are in this house. It's amazing. Um, there's some over there. Oh gosh, there's, there's just tons of, um, tons of work. And I don't even have all the lights on or anything, but you kind of get an idea um, how many paintings there are. Yeah, oh, that's one of Jill. Yeah, it just goes on and on, but um, it's kind of fun. So, Paris and Venice in the same room, and it kind of gives you a glimpse behind the scenes. Okay, I said this was behind the scenes again, but this is really behind the scenes. It's a quick shot in the garden room here. I've only got one painting out here because it has so much of you of the garden, but this is a recent piece about Paris. And um, it has the Eiffel Tower upside down on one side, and it's on wood. 
and I'm going to try to go a little closer here and show you it uses um, nails and wire and hey this is kind of fun huh and um, it's got smaller Eiffel Towers mixed in and the wood is very lightly painted with a kind of a blue wash uh, which is um, the boulevards uh, after Baron Hausman and um, it's just got I tried to work with the wood so that you had like it looked like different kinds of wood almost kind of like you know the way that French use the um, the wood at Versailles and they call it Versailles I think actually um, they use it in a lot of their buildings the wood floors with the parquet well it's kind of a fun thing so there's another version of Paris okay